Hey folks, uh, here with another vlog. This is uh, Steven Universe, Season 2, Episodes The Numbering Doesn't Make Any Sense, uh, but the titles are uh, Nightmare Hospital and Sadie's Song. Uh, first off, when I uh, saw the title for Nightmare Hospital, because the uh, place where I'm watching it gives the episode titles, uh, like, as, excuse me, in the links to the episodes, um, that doesn't just none of them. I commented to, uh, Vigo, my friend that's staying with me, uh, you know, that the title worried me because it sounded like I was in for some Silent Hill stuff. And yes, yes it was, um, the gem... Mutants, as I guess they're calling them, are freaky, and there's something about having arms for a head that is just, no. Nah. -uh. Nope. Not okay. Um, but of course, mostly this episode was about Connie and her relationship with her mother. In fact, both episodes are about characters' relationships with their mothers, which is interesting. Uh, they're both about mothers who are very controlling, in, expressed in slightly different ways. Um, first thing, and this is mostly because I was talking about it last night, Connie's mom is a very stereotypically Asian mom. Like, I was just talking about this other day, this the other day, you know, when I was growing up in the 80s, cartoons were full of really really racist depictions of, uh, you know, Asian people, uh, East Asian people. And, and I'll, I know Connie's family is Indian, which is not East Asia at all, but I'll get to that. Um, really, really racist. Um, like, I've... Commented in a lot of places, if you've read any of my writing uh, in which it comes up, uh, I've been pretty clear about uh, DuckTales was the first truly great cartoon on television. Um, everything before it that was good was repackaged movie shorts. Uh, DuckTales was the first truly great cartoon made for television. Um... And even it, like any time an East Asian character, or for that matter, South Asian, Middle Eastern, uh, anything from any part of Asia uh, showed up, uh, break out the stereotypes. Of course, given that the show stars a Scottish minor, a miser, it's not really limited to stereotypes of Asians. Uh, there's some stereotypes of white people, too. Um, but, like, subgroups of white people. But, point is, that was really common. And those particular stereotypes were kind of, when I was a kid, in the process of giving way to the stereotypes that became of East Asian people that I saw more in the 90s through to today, um, where the new stereotype was, um, like, hardworking, um, super strict parents who drove their kids to be super high achieving and made them take tons of extracurriculars, played the violin, um, did really well in school, like, basically an entire culture of super nerds who all knew martial arts. And to an extent, some of that stereotype in the last five or ten years feels like it's shifted uh, or spread to South Asians as well. Um, the Indian nerd is now a thing, and Connie is an instantiation of that. Um, now, obviously, a character who is studious and high achieving and plays musical instruments and so forth. There's nothing wrong with that. That's great. It's just something that I've been a bit uncomfortable with with Connie's character and 
this episode was kind of built on it, so I just thought I'd put that out there. It's, again, mitigated a little by the fact that she's not East Asian. But, like I said, some of that stereotype feels like it's shifting towards Indians, and this isn't, you know, the Indian character being, and, and her mom being the stereotypical uh, Asian mom, like, isn't helping. Um, all of that aside. Um, it was a great episode. Um, I, you know, uh, my, uh, Viga pointed out to me after, uh, the episode, uh, the contrast between how easily Connie lies compares to Steven, which implies Connie has a lot more experience lying, and how that's kind of a thing with, uh, people with very strict parents that, you know, don't, parents that don't trust them, they respond by lying a lot. And, I mean, that's generally true in any scenario. Uh, people who are used to not being trusted basically have nothing to lose by lying because no one trusts them anyway, so they may as well do it. Um, you know, there's no reason not to lie if everybody already distrusts you. There's no reason not to lie to your parents if your parents don't trust you. Um, and conversely, if your parents do trust you, well then, lying is a bad idea. It's less necessary and has greater consequences, so you learn not to do it. Um, but Connie, you know, she, she's got that terrible combination of parents that are both really strict and not very observant, which I feel like often actually go together simply because, like, when you adhere really rigidly to rules, that necessitates overlooking the nuance of situations, because no set of rules is as complicated as reality. No set of rules can exist which doesn't occasionally need to have exceptions. Um, and so the rigidity of her mother is necessarily requiring her to overlook or ignore or choose not to modify for circumstances. You know, like, no swords, swords are bad, well, except that, you know, swords are bad, swords are dangerous, except that Connie is actually trained in the use of them by someone who is, you know, it's hard to imagine anybody safer than Pearl in the sense that, you know, for all of her issues, Pearl is an extremely careful person with other people. Uh, even though she's, she was training in Sworn to the Sword, Connie to be self-sacrificing, uh, A, she seemed to learn her lesson about that at the end of the episode, and I don't think that's what Connie's been learning anymore. She and Steven have seemed to have been learning to coordinate fighting together, which is awesome, and exactly what I was hoping for at the end of that episode. I especially liked that spring off Steven's shield trick Connie did at the end of this episode. Um, but, where was I going with this? Um, Pearl is very meticulous. She's very careful not to cause mess or injury or anything like that. Um, Connie could not, po and she's a master of the sword for thousands of years. Connie could not possibly have a better teacher. Um, and so Connie's been perfectly safe while she's been training. And she will, you know, and now that she's trained, she'll be perfectly safe handling a sword because she knows how to do it. Um, you know, she is, I mean, somebody who has no idea what they're doing, yeah, it is quite possible that facing a gem monster with a sword would be more dangerous than not having a sword. A, because you wouldn't try to fight it, you'd run away. Whereas if you had a sword, you might be willing to fight it. And B, because you might hurt yourself with the sword. Um, by contrast, uh, Connie trained with a sword is safer with the gem monsters around. And that's kind of what her mom has to understand. And to her mom's credit, you know, she's like, well, clearly I have been messing up. If you have been lying to me and hiding things from me this much, clearly you have felt the need to do that, and therefore 
I've been doing something wrong. Um, I need to find out why you feel the need to do that and correct that. Which honestly is the best approach whenever anybody does something that is harmful to you or wrong, is to figure out why they did it and then address that. Um, you know, uh, some people, you know, sometimes the answer will just be because they're assholes and all you can do is kind of contain the person, but usually there's a reason, and usually that reason is something which can in some way be addressed or mitigated or resolved. Um, you know, so, like, the absolute worst thing she could have done is punish Connie. And I was worried she would. I was worried she'd be like, no, taking the sword away, Connie, you're never allowed to talk to Stephen again. Stephen again. Uh, but thankfully she didn't. Thankfully she was like, well, you know, if this is that important to you, then I need to respect that and do that. And I loved the thing about, like, I need to know where, where you are and what's going on with you so that I can step in if you get in over your head. Because that's perfect. That's parenting. You know? Let the kid go out there. Let them have their adventures. Let them live their lives. But be prepared to step in and rescue them. Says the guy who has never had, will never have kids. So, you know, take my parenting advice with a grain of salt. Um, but that seems to me like what would be best. And so I'm, I'm happy to see... The, you know, that it goes that way, because I think that'll work for Connie. Um, oh yeah, the other thing in the episode, uh, Connie and Steven continue to be adorable. Uh, I may have squeed when uh, they both got scared and immediately went for each other's hands. And that's... I don't know. Uh, that's always something that I've been like, aw, about. Um, I just find that a very cute way of showing, you know, the two characters trust each other, rely on one another, care for each other, uh, you know, it's that kind of little gesture that does so much more to tell you about what their relationship is than, say, you know, long pronounced speeches about how much they care. Um, it just feels more real and more immediate and less overt, even though it is, you know, it's not exactly so. But yeah, really, really good episode. Um, I mean, it was fairly obvious as soon as she mentioned, like, that the hospital brought in nightmarish creatures that would be some kind of gem thing and Connie would have to fight them and then her mom would react to that. But maybe because uh, the way it played out in Avatar The Last Airbender, where Toph had a very similar relationship with her parents, uh, and there it actually is a character who's basically coded as Chinese. Um, and at the end they were like, you know, oh, you've been running around behind our backs getting these lessons to fight. Clearly we have not been sufficiently strict. We must remove all freedom whatsoever. Um to ensure your safety. You know, uh, I was worried that that is how the episode would end, and I'm very glad it didn't. Uh, so, good job, Con Connie's mom. You're a better parent than Toph's dad. Uh, moving on, uh, Sadie's song had kind of a similar issue flipped, where Instead of being very controlling in the sense of trying to restrict her daughter's attitudes, Sadie's mom basically tries to, to take over Sadie's activities. She, you know, Sadie expresses an interest in something, and her mom pushes her full throttle into that, and then is surprised when Sadie doesn't want to do it anymore because it's not her thing anymore. Um, you know, and Stephen recognizes that he himself is doing it as well, which is nice. Um, it was really cool seeing, seeing Sadie 
singing this pop song about like how beautiful she is and successful and how everybody loves her like that makes total sense as something that would appeal to Sadie you know that that's Sadie's fantasy self um is you know because Sadie is easily the most unglamorous of uh, the kids of well of the girls of uh, Beach City I mean it's it's hard to be less glamorous than, like, Ronaldo. Uh, but, yeah, of the girls, um, she's, she's the one who's like, you know, she's, she's mostly sweet, and she's, you know, at heart a good person, but... There's nothing flashy about her. She, she's kind of plain and simple. Uh, straightforward kind of a person. So it makes sense that she'd have this fantasy life where she's this, you know, beautiful, maybe slightly remote, beloved, worshipped, you know, pop idol. Um, you know, that, that's her escape. Honestly, it also makes a lot of sense that she's got a really controlling, over-enthusiastic mom, too. Um, I can see how that would produce someone who kinda... I actually really like the use of the mime act here, because that's exactly how Sadie lives her life, is she kinda closes herself in an invisible box. Um, she's always holding herself back. Uh, notice how she, like, denies her enthusiasm for the song, how she tries to downplay it. She's like, oh, it's cheesy. Um, she's embarrassed by it. She doesn't want to admit to having this, you know, fantasy of being something other than she is. Um, she, she doesn't want to let people into her invisible box because her experience has been that when her mother finds out what she's interested in, uh, she essentially takes it away and takes it over. Um, so yeah. Uh, it was a, a good, good episode. It was a good character episode for Sadie. It gave us some solid insight into her. I'm a little curious of why Lars was, you know, he's, like, he, like, was storming out of the donut shop at the beginning of the episode, and he kind of blew off Steven, which was interesting. Um, I mean, it's Lars, so him being a dick is kind of to be expected, um, but it's still, like, is something going on with him? Um, like, I was wondering if, like, when, when Stephen came in and Sadie was singing, I was wondering if, oh, Lars is just annoyed, you know, that, you know, Sadie's been singing that song over and over again for days, and Lars is, you know, annoyed by that, or something like that. But then Sadie said that no one has ever heard her sing, which would imply that she does not do it when Lars is in the shop. She only does it when she's by herself. So... So, what was he upset about? Or was he just being Lars? Who knows? Um, yeah. Two good, solid episodes. Um, I noticed there's been a kind of a theme of parents this season. Because uh, we've had a lot about Rose and Greg, you know. Uh, we've had, I think, two episodes about them. We had uh, the one about uh, Mayor Dewey and his son. Um, now we have these two about uh, Connie and Sadie's relationships with their mothers. Um, oh, yeah, another moment that, made it, that you know... Uh, at, that was good in Nightmare uh, Hospital was uh, when Stephen is all happy that Connie and her mom are uh, making up and then uh, they say I love you to each other and he looks down at his mom's symbol on the sword and gets all, you know, somber. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, he, he misses his mom in that moment. Uh, 
So yeah, definitely been this kind of theme of exploring like characters' relationships with their parents and finding out more about characters' parents. Which is, which is interesting. Um, I wonder if that's going to play into something. Um, I can't remember if I mentioned on this channel. I've watched the extended version of the new opening. No, I have mentioned it because I mentioned that I like the new opening uh, more after having watched the extended version because uh, it's a better last verse than it is an only verse. Um, but Pearl in that is the only gem that gets like a lengthy segment of her own. Like she gets a whole verse to herself, whereas the others only get, like they all get their little I will fight for, but she's the only one who gets more than that. And it's about origins. It's about, you know, her wishing that she could tell Stephen what the gems really are and about how they first came to Earth. And so I'm wondering if, like, this exploration of parents is leading up to more of an exploration of origins, that uh, Stephen is going to learn more about Homeworld or more about how the gems first came to Earth or more about the war or all of the above. Um... Or alternatively, that, that the season is going to be have a lot about the absence of Rose Quartz. Because, uh, of course, anything that's bringing up parents, you know, it's going to bring that up. Um, but it also was a major factor in, you know, Sworn to the Sword. Um, Rose, uh, Pearl's loneliness uh, and, and her missing of Rose Quartz is... Uh, it's it's been a thing in uh, Sworn to the Sword. It's been kind of a recurring thing uh, since it's ultimately ultimately I think what's at the root of her wanting to fuse with Garnet so badly that she lied about it. Um, so I don't know. Either way, season continues to be really strong. Uh, Nightmare Hospital in particular was a really good episode. Uh, Sadie's song was not at all bad, and I'm going to go watch some more. Bye.